Hey guys, Lou here from databear.com. I'm happy to bring you this week's DAX Databear Necessities. If you joined us last week, we looked at uh, some table functions in the first part of our two-part table expressions series. Last week, we looked at the all and filter functions. This week, we are going to be looking at some new ones. So part two of uh, this uh, table function series, we're going to be looking at values. In fact, before we do that, I want to go over a concept of the no matching rows. Then we're going to be looking at the distinct function. And lastly, we're going to do the all no blank row function. Of course, these are all table functions. I may also compare that to the all function just to differentiate between those two. So let's have a look at how these work. So starting with the values function. The values returns the distinct values in a column and it only returns the values visible in the current filter context. So unlike all, it actually takes the filter context into account. And of course, it includes the additional no match row. So on that note, I want to just explain this um, no match row, what it means and how it can affect your calculations. So in a scenario, in fact, I'm going to flip over to an Excel file here where I've built a simple uh, model. And in this model, we've got two tables. We've got an uh, items table with an item ID one to four and item names uh, for one to four. And we've got a sales table with an item ID and the total number of sales for each of those IDs. The one thing I would like you to note is that in our items IDs, they are one through to four. In our sales table, we have an additional item, um, item ID number five, which is not available in the items table. So how, how does this affect our model? So if I open up the diagram view, we can see that there's a relationship between the item ID of the items table as well as the item ID of the sales table. Going back to our report. So let's create a pivot table to explain what this issue actually uh, gives us. So if I drop in from the items table, the item name, immediately you will see um, Power BI creates a blank row. And why is this? So it's, it's created a, a name for each item. And then it also created a blank row. And this blank is due to the fact that the sales table, which has a relationship with the item table, has an item in here that does not belong to any items in the item table. And therefore, Power BI returns a blank row. Okay, so if uh, if we jump back to our values, remember we said values returns the distinct values in a column and it returns values visible in the current filter context. So I've, I've created some, some measures. So the first one I've created was for values and we are doing a count rows of values of the item names in the item table. So if I drop this into our values, we can see that values counts the rows for each item and it even counts the one where the row is blank. So it gives us a full count of five. Let's jump to distinct to um, have a look at that function. So distinct returns the distinct values in a column. It only returns values within the filter context. 
and it's to some extent similar to all um, the difference is that all returns all values ignoring all the filters and again it does not return the no match row so let's have a quick look again at our file so here's our values uh, measure we've created and we also have a measure for distinct so here we do a count rows of the distinct values in the item uh, the items table of item names if i drag this over onto our canvas you'll notice that it does not count blank values distinct only returns a count where a value is not blank so let's also look at the all and all no blank row table functions all as you know returns all the rows in a table it ignores all existing filters so it removes any filter context whether you've applied filters or slices or even if your measure includes filters all will remove all filters and it results in a table that can then be iterated by an x function or other aggregations and of course it needs either a table or a table column as an input so let's have uh, a look as before i've created two other measures one for all so we're doing a count rows of all item names from the items table and again um, i've done a count rows on all no blank rows of the item name column in the items table so if we drag those two into our pivot table we can see something very interesting happening here so all um, even for the blanks all has returned a count row of all items including the blank all non-blank row has returned all items excluding the blank row so immediately you can see that there is a distinct difference between values and distinct and all and all blank rows and where this would become if i can use an example so if you want to calculate the percentage of sales per say item and you use the all table function if there is a blank item in um, in your table or in your calculation it will probably slightly skew uh, depending on how many rows or items are blank it will skew the percentage sales you have across all of your sales so the the denominator will be incorrect so that's just one example of where this uh, would be very important to make sure that when you use either values or distinct or all or all no blank row that you use the correct um, measure as before um, in order to to see how these table functions work or what value or values it returns with if you include it inside of other measures uh, you can go to the modeling tab then click on new table and once there you can specify the uh, the table function so for example um, let's call this one values and uh, we're going to call the values table function and let's say we want to see the values of the sales fact table and of the customer uh, customer names if we have a look at this table we can see that uh, it, it has returned a unique list of uh, customer names if there were any blanks it would have included a blank row here but in our case we have a full unique list of customer name values 
And of course, you could do the same process with the other table functions, whether it's all, all, no, blank row, etc. And you can test it before you include it in your measure and to ensure that your measures are correct and calculating properly. So that's it for this week. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please come back and um, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Click the bell icon if you'd like to subscribe to this video. And we will see you next week for some more data bare necessities. Have a good one. Visit databear.com to find out more about how we can turn your reporting dreams into a reality. Your data, our story.